right, folks, this is the test you've been waiting for. We tested these batteries at 20 amps, boring. We tested them at 40 amps and started to see some stuff going on. And now we're gonna hit them with 60 amps. And this is the test where some of these batteries really start to fall on their face. Who's gonna puff and who's gonna shine? Let's get into the test results and find out. But before we get into the results, it's important that I tell you a little bit about the methodology. I will try to keep it short. I know I tend to go on about methodology because I tried to use the same methodology for this test that I used for the previous tests, discharge to 14.0 volts and then record all the numbers. And what I found was, well, watch what happens. 69, dude. <laughs> Here we go. Boom. Well, if you blinked, you might have missed it. It took five seconds for this battery to go from full charge to 13.99 volts, drawing uh, about 60 amps. We discharged 68 milliamp hours in that time. This battery clearly is not done. In the 40 amp test, I said that if the battery sagged to 13.99 and then we backed off the throttle and it recovered, I wasn't going to keep testing the battery because if you were flying and that happened, you would land, you'd be done. And I feel like that's true. But a 60 amp punch is so much bigger than a 40 amp punch. I feel like for most pilots, that would represent a relatively small portion of your flying. So you might do a sustained 40 amp punch to go over a tree, do a split S, or on a long straight in a race. But you're probably not going to do, most of you, going to do sustained 60 amp punches. 60 amp punches are probably going to be much shorter. And so if this battery can do 60 amps for 5 seconds and only deliver 68 milliamp hours with uh, 16 volts as its new resting voltage, I'm going to keep testing it. And that's what I did for these tests. I kept hitting the battery until it went down to 13.99 volts, then stop and let it recover. And I repeated that until one of two things happened. Number one, until it rested at 15 volts. At that point, I feel like the battery's done. Or number two, if it wasn't resting at 15 volts, but the, the surges were just so short, if it was just like less than a second and it would drop immediately to 13.99, I was like, okay, that battery's done. You're not gonna fly on that. And I would end the test. So you can see here, this battery is resting at about 15.36, but as soon as I hit it, that was maybe a two second pulse, comes back to 15.3. We hit it again, boom, 13.99. It's, it's kind of done. I may hit it a few more times, but it's really just basically done at this point. All right, so let's look at the data then. I've added some columns here because the methodology changed. I felt like there were some metrics that you needed to know about that the previous metrics didn't fully encapsulate. One of the columns I added is number of bursts. And for number of bursts, lower is better. A battery with more bursts had more sag. They had to stop and when it hit 13.99 volts and then go back and let it rest and hit it again. So a battery with two bursts is much better than a battery with 13 bursts. It was able to deliver 60 amps or thereabouts consistently without sagging and without having to take a break. Longest burst is the time of the single longest burst without regard to whether it was the first, second, third, or fourth. For some reason in this testing, the first burst was usually very short, and then the second burst was the longest one. That was true for almost all of the batteries, if not all of them. So I recorded the time of the longest burst, and again, higher is better. The battery was able to deliver the current without needing a break. Time is the total amount of time that it, the battery was discharging at this rate. So it's basically the sum of the length of the bursts. Longer is better. Milliamp hour, milliamp hour percent, watt hour are all the sum of what it was discharged. And then we've got the stop voltage here, which is 13.99 for all of them, and the resting voltage. The resting voltage for all of the batteries that finished the test would be 15.06. Any battery with a higher resting voltage than 15.06 did not finish the test. Either the battery overheated or the bursts were so short that I feel like this is not realistic. You would not fly on this battery and I stopped the test early. The other question that you might ask is why aren't the amps consistent? And I don't know the answer to that, especially I don't know why the Mad Dog had an average of about 68 amps when the others were very close to 60. I don't know something about it. The test changed slightly and I wasn't willing to go back and rerun the Mad Dog test. So bear in mind that the Mad Dog battery was actually working a lot harder than any of the other batteries in the test. With that all being said, let's now take a look at the actual results. 
the 1800 batteries between the Bolt and the Nanotech, how much better did the high volt do compared to the regular LiPo? The high volt knocked my freaking socks off in this test. If you watch the original video I recorded, I'm just saying, oh my God, I can't believe this. Literally the whole time, it just pumped out the current without breaking a sweat. It went for one minute and five seconds delivering 1100 milliamp hours without stopping. And then it did one more little burst <laughs> and then it was done. This is just the single best battery in the test. The 1800 delivered its current in six bursts with the longest burst of only 49 seconds. It didn't do bad. In fact, its, uh, its longest burst was only six seconds shorter than the Bolt, but the Bolt did slightly better. So these batteries are very close. The Bolt is definitely doing better as we get into the 60 amp range. And I can only assume that the Bolt would continue to do better as we went to even higher amperages. However, the Nanotech still did a fantastic job. And that's of course because it's an 1800 milliamp hour battery and we're only pulling 33C out of it, whereas the other batteries were pulling closer to uh, 45 or 50C. So uh, this really speaks to the fact that that extra 50 grams that you're paying for this battery is giving you much better current delivering capacity. Uh, and that's something to think about if you're going into a race. Of the 1300s, and let's face it, this Green Gorilla 1400 is really acting more like a 1300 now that we're into these higher discharge rates. Of the 1300s, the Bolt and the Mad Dog were still very closely matched. Six bursts and seven bursts, 20 seconds for the Mad Dog, 25 seconds for the Bolt, a total of 50 seconds for the Mad Dog, and 53 seconds for the Bolt. But... Remember that the Mad Dog was delivering 68 amps and the Bolt was only delivering 60 amps. So the Mad Dog does appear to have done only slightly worse. Although notice here, the Mad Dog still won in milliamp hours, right? And watt hours. But the B Mad Dog was delivering 68 amps versus 60. So it was at 52 C and the Bolt was only at 46 C. I feel like the Mad Dog definitely has pulled ahead here. Again, in previous tests, the, these batteries have been very close with the Mad Dog just edging out the bolt. And now that we're in the 60 amp range, the Mad Dog is really showing its metal, delivering almost 70 amps. I would feel like it would be completely legitimate to call the Mad Dog a 50C battery, no question. So this may put the lie to my claim that no battery is doing better than about 40, 45C. If you can go 20 seconds at 50C without sagging below 14 volts, I have to start acknowledging that you may have a legitimate C rating. The Green Gorilla did pretty badly. It did okay for a LiPo. It beat the LiPos, so that's something. But it didn't even come close to the bolt of the Mad Dog. Max burst 8 seconds, 16 bursts to finish the test, and it didn't even quite finish the test. It, see, fit resting of 15.12. The, the bursts were just too short. And notice the temperature, 129 degrees. I did not let any battery go over 130 in this test. That was the dead stop. Okay, so the Green Gorilla just did worse than the others, hands down. There's nothing more to say. The SMC and the Bonka 1300. Well, we really start to see the difference here between the high volts and the standard LiPos. The standard LiPos were doing 20 to 25 second bursts, and the, the SMC and the Bonka standard LiPos did five second bursts. Now a five second burst is still perfectly usable, and if you look at the actual video, which I haven't posted, but if you were to look at it, you would see that they, they had maybe, you know, a three second burst, then a five second burst, then a five second burst, then a three second, then a four second. These are usable bursts of power, and let's not forget also that 60 amps Again, most of us are not pulling 60 amps for much of the flight. So I feel like a 60 amp five second burst is still a respectable battery that you could use. And I do in fact use this battery. I fly this battery and uh, just every day I fly this battery and have no problem with it. But the Bonka is rated like, I think it's 70 C. And here we are at 45 C and we're just getting five second bursts. You can only imagine what you're gonna get if you were to actually try to do some 70 C bursts. We got 642 and 643 milliamp hours out of the battery under these conditions, only 50% of their rated capacity. And neither of these batteries finished the test either. Neither of them managed to get down to 15.06 volts. We had to stop the test early again because the bursts were just so short. 
Finally, we've got the Green Gorilla 1100. Unfortunately, again, nothing to compare it to. How did it do? Max burst five seconds. Well, that's pretty respectable. That compares. The 1100 high volt is, is performing in some respects comparable to a 1300 LiPo. So that's something. I have a friend, uh, I don't know if I told you this in a previous video, he's decided to try 1100 high volts instead of 1300 LiPos to save a few grams on his copter. And he says it flies, yeah, it flies all right. There's one more thing that I want to point out to you that I think is really important. If you look at this test, the 1800 milliamp hour batteries are discharging at a rate of about 30 to 35 C, and they're pretty much discharging continuously at that rate. You're only getting 65 to 70 percent of the capacity, and in fact, in your first surge, you're getting a little bit less than that. But you're still getting 60 percent, let's say, of the battery's capacity dumped in one continuous burst. And so I feel like that is a re it's reasonable to say that the battery can deliver 60 amps continuous realistically. Whereas when we get up into the 40 to 45 to even 50 C range, these batteries are delivering much, much shorter bursts, sagging much more, delivering a much smaller percentage of their overall capacity. And I think we can look for that pattern to continue. As you're thinking about how big of a battery you need and what kind of a C rating your battery needs, first of all, forget C rating, because at the end of the day, the C rating these batteries, some of these batteries are 60C, some are 70C, some are 37 amp true spec. At the end of the day, the C rating on the label, as we all know, is total BS. I think what, what I'm going to do going forward is I'm going to think about how many amps my copter is going to draw a peak. And if I target a battery that is in the range of about, let's say, 45 or 50C, which is what I said going into this testing, then uh, I'll probably be okay. And if I'm going to be sustaining, like continuously, like really continuously, not like fake battery manufacturer continuously, if I'm really going to be sustaining a certain amp rating, I'm going to want to keep that under, let's say, 30C for whatever size of battery I get. Now, there may be some wiggle room in there for some high quality versus lower quality batteries, but I have a feeling as we go forward in this testing, we're going to see that there aren't many exceptions to that rule. The bottom line is if you need to pull a certain amperage, like let's say you need to pull 70 amps and you buy a 1000 milliamp hour 70C battery, I don't think you're going to be really happy with that. You're just going to be in this realm where you get instant sag and, and no uh, actual sustained power. Keep your batteries under about, let's say, 30C continuous and about 45 or 50C for a few second punches, and I think you're going to be happy. And that does it for group one of my battery tests. I know you guys want to see me put 70C, 80C, 100C through these batteries, but I think at this point we can kind of see where it's going. You're not going to get more than a half a second or a second's worth of punch, and then the battery's going to sag, and that's going to be the end of the test. I've told you what you need to know to decide whether you want to buy one of these batteries, and that is the best I can hope for. If you want to see something light on fire, go light something on fire. I'm gathering batteries for group two. Don't hold your breath for it, but it is coming some point in the future. And in the meantime, happy flying.